Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the film Knight of Cups. Terrence Malick is the kind of filmmaker where I'd see pretty much anything he makes. He's an auteur in the highest regard. He makes films like no one else anymore. His films get stranger and weirder and more poetic and lyrical as they go on. They become even less mainstream just as he's becoming a bigger name as a director. He's an oddity. He's a mystery. And while watching his films, I always try to decipher them, try to figure them out. I always feel like I don't know enough about film to even try sometimes with something like Tree of Life or Days of Heaven or Badlands and all of which as much as I feel like I know them I feel like I also don't I feel like there's more maybe literary illusions maybe things I don't understand maybe things I'll never understand maybe things that don't mean anything but I think have a lot of meaning behind them and watching a Terrence Malick film is typically an intense experience especially the more modern ones with cinematography by Emmanuel Lubetsky who recently won his third best cinematography Oscar in a row but the way he works with Terrence Malick is like nothing you've seen in any of those films he won Oscar Oscars too. He might have tried to get close to that in The Revenant, but this feels kinetic. It feels unplanned. It feels like an energy where you're not sure if the camera's gonna run away screaming and crying or if it's going to stay in the scene and follow them. It's just a loose, crazy energy where you're not sure what's gonna happen in ways that I don't think most cameramen can feel that alive. Terrence Malick brings all that to the screen, but Knight of Cups is not as great as any Terrence Malick movie I've seen. In fact, I think it's a potentially the worst film I've ever seen by him. Now I haven't seen The New World, so in all fairness, it could potentially not be. When I talk about Terrence Malick, I think of all the meaning I see within his films. I think about how maybe I'm not getting something. I think about how there's mystery there, how I need to see it again. I feel challenged as a viewer. And Knight of Cups didn't feel that way. I felt like I understood Knight of Cups. The aesthetics of the film are wonderful and glorious, and probably aesthetically, this is probably one of the best looking films of this year. It's a beautiful, amazing film. It's probably the best, most glorious, most artistic, strange way you'll ever see LA in your life, but it feels like you can understand it. It didn't feel like I was getting into it. This isn't to show off that I'm such a smart film goer that I can decipher Terrence Malick right away. This film just wasn't as challenging as it usually is. Having a very rich Hollywood screenwriter have an existential crisis isn't as original as he usually is. Even if something like that is at the center of his films, there feels like there's so much more. It feels so much deeper. And Knight of Cups almost didn't really feel as deep, and I wasn't sure if that was the point or not, but I was sure that I didn't enjoy this as much. Knight of Cups is actually named after tarot card, and tarot cards have a lot to do with the structure of this film, if you can call it a structure. It's kind of so freeform. Terrence Malick seems to be getting more and more freeform as he goes on. Most directors get a little honed in and tuned as they get older. Terrence Malick is the opposite. It starts off with various tarot cards, the first part being the moon, the hangman, the hermit, judgment, the tower, the high priestess, death, and freedom. One of the main problems with this film is the character at its center, which is Rick, played by Christian Bale. And Christian Bale is a good actor, but he feels like almost a cipher. We're almost discovering everyone in his life through him, but I feel like anytime we're discovering him, he's hanging out with beautiful women or just hanging out and looking sad. I don't understand how he became a big screenwriter. He's supposed to be a big screenwriter for comedies that they kind of mention, but I don't really get it. He's just kind of there. Maybe that's the point. Supposedly this is based on Terrence Malick's day is a successful screenwriter. He helped do uncredited work on things like Dirty Harry before he made Badlands. But it's almost like all the characters he meets are more interesting than him. He never feels like the most interesting person and we're following him. And I understand this is a weirder, stranger movie and, you know, maybe the point of it was to go through him, but that made it a lot emptier. But also that someone going through and meeting a bunch of people through an existential crisis, I'm sorry, that's not really as interesting as you usually is. Now, most of the time when you look at a film, as the famous Eber quote said, you're supposed to view a film not what it is about, but how it is about it. I agree with that to a certain regard, and I think how it is about it, this film is expertly, amazingly done, and you can't really argue with how well it's made. In fact, this is probably one of those films where I'd say, if you're a serious film goer, you should absolutely see this movie, but hopefully if you've seen other Terrence Malick movies, this is absolutely not the first one to see at all. I didn't really feel as connected to him as I do through his other characters and I really didn't like how he portrayed women with the exception of Kate Blanchett. That might be because Kate Blanchett's such an amazing actress. Kate Blanchett's just always stunning in anything and she's just amazing in this as well as his ex-wife and she's probably the best performance in the whole film which is typical of anything starring Kate Blanchett. She had a
a vulnerability to her and anger. It felt like he was just fucking his way through understanding the meaning of life. And as cool as it is to see a guy fuck a bunch of bitches and stuff, I didn't feel like him fucking a bunch of bitches really brought much to the film. It just kind of showed, look at all this excess over and over again. It constantly wanted to show how shallow LA was and what LA was like and how strange and weird it is, but it didn't really want to say anything with it that hasn't been said before. And it felt that way. It felt like Terrence Malick takes a stab at something kind of like a dumb Hollywood comedy could do. And maybe that's sort of the point. And I guess the point maybe that his life, this rich Hollywood screenwriter who basically has life handed to him, because you never see him earn his success, you just see him in his success, which is a lot different when you're an audience member, is what he's trying to do, the grandeur of what he's trying to do, trying to point out the pretentiousness and the pointlessness of a person like this. He felt like sometimes he was saying that, but it also felt like most of the time he believed in him as well. If this really is autobiographical, it makes me think Terrence Malick has kind of a huge ego about himself, but almost thinks he makes fun of himself while having a huge ego about himself. Aesthetically and how he comes about it, it's kind of interesting, but I really could never get past like how badly some of the characters were. It was interesting to see, since this was in LA, when they'd have an LA party, all the various people they had at the LA parties, you saw Ryan O'Neill, Thomas Lennon, Nick Off. Offerman. You actually hear Dan Harmon in the background. You see his ex-wife, Aaron McGaffey. I was mostly just surprised. Ryan O'Neill, awesome. Joe Manganiello. Apparently people are just told to show up and you were in a Terrence Malick film. And I actually like Tom Lennon, although he doesn't feel like someone who would normally be in a Terrence Malick film. And even wrote a piece about it, which I'll probably link in the description. An interesting read. And I like someone like Antonio Banderas brought to this film. And even Wes Bentley and Brian Dennehy. Everyone's performances were great. With all the litany of famous actors he had throughout this film was amazing, partly because I think they filmed it in LA and people could just drive down the street and be in the movie or whatever. And it definitely had this LA feel to it, but almost this empty movie star feel of LA, not like the LA of Tangerine. I really think what brings this film alive is Emmanuel Lubetsky's cinematography. When he moves the camera around, these actors improvising and making up scenes and not sure what they're doing. As his camera moves around, it has that uncertainty, but it has that energy. When he's near a cliff, it feels like he's gonna throw the camera off the ledge and you're gonna watch the camera fall down to oblivion. It just has that intense energy that all his films have, which makes all his films a unique experience in themselves. I love watching Emmanuel Lubetsky control the camera for a Terrence Malick film. It's why Emmanuel Lubetsky is so well regarded. He can win Oscars for as much inner Ritu crap as you want, but like what he does with Terrence Malick is really him at his purest and most intense and shows how beautiful he can be as a cinematographer. What Terrence Malick brings out in him. It's just amazing. I mean, just no one even comes close to that shit. Emmanuel Lubetsky is almost made to shoot Terrence Malick films. This period in Terrence Malick's filmography is made by Emmanuel Lubetsky. He is that fucking important. The aesthetics give you an energy. They give it a flow to it. They give it these kind of artful, crazed movies. Certainly, people have even said it's like the best directed Entourage episode you've ever seen. I guess that's kind of what it is in a way. It is like the deeper, artful, existential Entourage episode that you think you'd never see. And it is kind of the only Entourage episode to call into question why he's here and have a crisis about it and actually do it in a way that's interesting and introverted. Certainly Entourage couldn't actually do that and Terrence Malick goes a lot deeper into fame than a lot of people do. So maybe I shouldn't be so hard in this. Maybe I should like it. But to me it was like To the Wonder was kind of a film I just kind of liked being an auteur-centric critic and just going like, oh, I like it because it's Terrence Malick. And I noticed a lot of reviews are like that for this film. But To the Wonder, I've really watched it and thought about what's going on between those frames, what's going on with that camera, how interesting it is, how beautiful it is. Then when I see Knight of Cups, I just don't feel that way. Aesthetically, it makes me dream, it makes me alive, it makes me think in cinematic terms, it's beautiful. But then there was an experience of watching a Terrence Malick film that was missing for me, in that I felt like I kind of got it, and I don't want that from Terrence Malick. I want the beautiful intensity of what he's doing. I want how different he is. I want all of that through a Terrence Malick film. And you're just not really going to get that different, insane, crazy cinematic experience that you usually do from this film. 
It's an interesting idea, this tarot card thing. I'm not exactly sure what he's trying to do with all that stuff. It kind of feels like he's poking holes in his own self or he's going into self-parody. I really have not figured that one out. It's almost a film where you're not sure if he's teetering on destruction of his own artistry. Like this is the point of no return where he's not going to be good anymore or he's really onto something and you missed it. It feels less like the latter, frankly, while I was watching it, which does feel disconcerting. Just thinking of things of war any of his period pieces are a lot more interesting to me than a film in LA like this. It almost feels like I've seen a million films in LA like this. The way he does it makes it a more memorable one. I'm still going to think about shots from this, exchanges, Nick Offerman talking in the background, all sorts of bizarre things like that that I can't really exactly put together. And I still have that in it, but the basic structure of it, there's parts of me who doesn't think I really understand Tree of Life. And I feel like I understand Knight of Cups. And maybe that was the point, even though this feels more freeform and lyrical and strange but I'm also kind of sick of white guy sadness going through an existential crisis kind of shit I expect more from Terrence Malick he did more with it he put it in different ways than most people but I just wasn't as surprised by it I wasn't in wonder I was kind of more like oh okay I mean at least you got Lebetsky here and you have that feels like you're trying to portray that mystery and I wanted to get into it but I just really couldn't because it felt like I could kind of figure it out that was something I don't think was as interesting I almost feel like you should have just written a script and sold it to somebody and moved on to something a little more promising. It does feel like the lesser in his filmography. It doesn't feel as an intense, inquisitive film experience. It feels like something I can understand automatically and that's something I never wanted from his films every time the first time I've seen them I almost feel like in a daze of how intense it feels I feel like I really need to go home and just think about it and lay on my couch and look at the ceiling forever and I just really didn't feel that way this time I felt like I got it I was cool I need a little more time to think about it but it just didn't really do that to me this time this was probably the one time I felt I understood it and that's something I don't want from a Terrence Malick film. I want to be in that unique experience and have that unique experience, that enriching, smart, cinephile, film-going experience that I've had throughout his films. And although aesthetically it's there, Emmanuel Lebetsky doesn't hold back on that. Terrence Malick, in terms of moving the camera around and getting the actors to act and setting up shots and sequences, they don't hold back from that at all. But I think story-wise, this film just didn't really feel as unique as it usually is. And as aesthetically amazing as it is, and as beautiful as Terrence Malick usually directs his films, I just don't feel like this film lives up to his great filmography. And sure, I could say, well, it's a Terrence Malick, so that's good. And I guess in that way, but in another way, I feel that's kind of a boring reason to see a movie. So if you're really into Terrence Malick, sure, fine. You will you will probably at least acknowledge that it was pretty cool that you saw it. This kind of makes me worried that he's going through films so quickly. And even though To the Wonder wasn't as great as Tree of Life, I kind of went, well, he just made Tree of Life, so that's fine. But now that he's making something even lesser than that, I'm semi-worried, I'm semi-concerned, but I'm still in awe of watching his films. I'm just not in awe of taking them in anymore. But at least I can be in awe of watching them and watching that amazing camera move around. And as long as I guess as he has that, that's pretty cool, but I'd rather leave the film thinking and having my brain on fire like I usually am, and I just really wasn't with Knight of Cups. So if you have seen Knight of Cups and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to. <laughs>